Hello, world. Welcome to Friday Follow Up here on Two Guys on the Couch. I am George. And I'm Joe. We're here to wade through the bullshit and give you our opinions on upcoming movies and games. Let's kick it off with a blast from the 90s past making its return. Yes. For Scree 4M. Scream 4. Yes, they're making a fourth movie, and it's supposed to be the beginning of a new trilogy, which I don't know why they're calling it Scream 4. It should have called it, like, Scream Redo or something. Is it going to be a prequel? No, it's going to be a sequel. Um, it's going to have all the main characters back. Nev Campbell, Courtney Cox, David Arquette, they're all coming back. And it's also being written by the same guy, Kevin Williamson, and directed by Wes Craven. So, everyone's fucking coming back. I've, I've never seen any of the Screams after 2? Well, there's only one after 2. Well, I, I mean... I, I, obviously, if this is the fourth one, <laughs> but I didn't see the third one. I don't even know if I saw the second one. But like these, the main people didn't die in any of them. Well, no, <laughs> just these side characters got killed off. Oh. Nev Campbell survived all of them, and unfortunately, you know, this will probably be the first time she's come back to actual movies for a while. I think she's been doing other shit, but really, Nev Campbell, she dropped off the radar after, after probably Scream. Th uh, no. Was Scream 3 before or after Wild Things? I don't know. Guidance counselors get to find out all sorts of interesting things. What? No! J.J. Abrams, which, he's a hit or miss type of director. I don't know, I liked Mission Impossible 3, and I did like his directing of Star Trek. I yes, just... but then you had Cloverfield, so like I said, uh... hit or miss. Um, he's teaming up with uh, the great Steven Spielberg concept of it is it's supposed to be a tip of the hat to Spielberg's movies of the 70s and early 80s, and the script is reported to deal with everyday people whose personal relationships are tested when they are thrown up against extraordinary, fantastic, and possibly otherworldly events. So, so it's pretty, going to be pretty much every, every, like every other Steven Spielberg movie, except his war ones. If you ask me, it kind of sounds like War of the Worlds. Yeah, but the 70s and 80s, the only thing Spielberg ever did out of the 80s that was good was Indiana Jones. Not only that, but it's supposed to be low budget, and the bonus, no shaky cam. That is good. No uh, shaky cam. I don't know about low the low budget part, though. Like, why? It's not like neither of them can't I mean, it's yeah. not like Spielberg can't throw some fucking cash towards it. Maybe they want to go back to the time when they first started. Or at least when Steven Spielberg first started, where he had to use more creativity than he did money. Maybe. But even when even his more gritty stuff, like Minority Report, I mean, it was still a high-budget movie, but yeah. it had a gritty feel to it, and it was I awesome. mean, me personally, I, I, a lot of his older stuff, I think, is overrated. Like, Jaws, I personally think that Jaws is boring up to the end, and it took, like, I don't want to sit around for an hour and a half waiting for something to fucking happen. Shark still looks fake. Sci-Fi announced that they're going to be teaming up with THQ to bring Red Faction to a sci-fi movie, mm -hmm. which uh, that could be good, or yeah. that could be utter trash, yeah. and then depending <laughs> on what well that does, they're going to spin it into a possible TV show. Yeah, Sci-Fi, they also have a hit or miss thing. Sometimes they can produce really awesome stuff, mm -hmm. and then other times they produce the sci-fi movie of the week. It wasn't an explosion. It wasn't terrorists. It was giant piranha. The THQ's Danny Bilson, he is quoted saying, I'm only doing deals where we have a green light. So, so there's no way Red Faction is not being made. It's been announced. It's being made. What period. I'm, what one thing I'm worried about though is the whole point of Red Faction is everything blows up. How are they going to do that on a sci-fi budget? Well, see, that's just it. Sci-fi can actually make a, can put a lot of money into something if they want to. It's like yes, yeah. most of the time they make these uh, these Saturday movie nights, which is just crap. But then again, they make movie, they make TV shows like Battlestar, which had a huge budget. Yeah, 
But they're also t saying that uh, they're going to be somewhat tied to the sequel to Gorilla. Yes. So the game Red Faction Gorilla that comes this 20, 2011 maybe if it doesn't get delayed. 2011 Red Faction game. Um, it will be produced in conjunction with Sci-Fi Games who are also making Battle, uh, Battlestar MMO and a thing called Sci-Fi Action MMO which they have screenshots out and they look really cool. Well, it's concept art, yeah, it's not screenshots. Uh, yeah, concept art, and the concept art looks really cool. Mm -hmm. If they pull it off, great. Battlestar MMO is probably going to be huge, because, you know, Battlestar had a huge following. No, Star Trek is a huge following. That MMO fell flat. Really? Yes, it's a terrible MMO. Oh, well. Just, I mean, nobody can compete with WoW, so I don't even know why they try. I play WoW! I play WoW! I want to give a congratulations to a friend of mine, Dave DeVera. He has written, got a group together, actually created and published a comic book, Ninja Bitch. <laughs> I've read the comic book already, and coming up on Monday, we'll give you a brief review of it. It's, um, the artwork isn't that great, but from what I understand, they're actually going to get a new artist, because the artist who did this one wasn't serious about it. So, we'll see how that goes. Uh, but the story, it takes place in Iron City, which is pretty much Pittsburgh. And it look it's done, the story looks like it's going to be pretty interesting. It's going to be a four-parter, and we'll let you know how it goes. We'll give you, like I said, a review on Monday. You can actually check out their website at www.diamondgoatmedia.com. A little badass thing of the week this week. Uh, Microsoft pro is producing these webisodes for Alan Wake. It's a prequel story to Alan Wake called Bright Falls. You can download them for free on Xbox Live. And so far, <laughs> as of recording this, there's two episodes up, and it's it's pretty cool. Uh, it's def the, they definitely put money behind it, and it looks good. The fact that they are making a, a TV show for Xbox Live as a prequel to Alan Wake, I mean, that's badass. It's a lot better than what fucking Sony's doing with the tester, which was stupid. Yeah. I actually think they sh there should be more companies who do this. It's like Microsoft isn't short on money, you know, and if Microsoft box them, like if they come out with an exclusive, have Microsoft, you know, give money and publish some shorts. Or actual an actual maybe three part or four part TV show. Or what they do, what they're doing with all with their Halo promotions, with all the live action trailers they have, they're awesome. Why don't Microsoft make a fucking movie studio and put on movies already? Yeah, it's like Microsoft. Why are you waiting for other studios to make Halo the movie? Do it your fucking self. You got the money. You're only the richest company in the world. I mean, Christ. Shit just got real. That's gonna do it for the Friday follow up. On Monday, for our Monday Media Review, we're going to touch on Nightmare on Elm Street that opens this weekend. Mm -hmm. We're both looking forward to it. Yes, very psyched, because we believe in remakes like this. But we're also going to review a movie that I never freaking heard of till the other day called Ip Man. It looks like a badass yeah. Chinese kung fu flick. Yeah, this is actually, there's actually two parts, but the first part's not, re the second part's not released yet. It comes out this year. Yes. But uh, I've never heard of the first movie, but... Uh, I, I, after I heard about it, I was like, we gotta watch that and review it. It looks awesome. Uh, we're also going to cover uh, Red Faction, because that was kind of a sleeper hit. It sold about yes. 1.2 million units across Xbox and, and uh, PlayStation. But it's a fucking awesome game, and not a lot of people... Yeah, Red Faction know, Gorilla is a great game. It. and I mean, they actually they wanted to promote this game so much that they was putting it out there for free if you bought Dante's Inferno, was mm -hmm. it? No? no? That's a different company, oh. dude. Who was it? <laughs> if, <laughs> THQ <laughs> made the game. Dante's Inferno was made by EA. But uh, if you bought Darksiders, they gave Dark you Siders. a promotion code that they didn't say what it was for. But uh, then they announced uh, a few months later that you know, they'd give you a free copy of Red Faction Gorilla plus a digital art book for Darksiders. Which, Darksiders is a fucking awesome game, too, if you haven't played that. Yes. Especially if you love Zelda and you hate what Nintendo did with the Wii. And you want to play a good Zelda game, but you don't own a Wii. <laughs> play Dark At least they got rid of the whole cartoony look. For Zelda? Yeah. At least for the Wii. Yeah. Uh, who knows what they're going to... For, for all we know, the next Zelda could be uh, fucking 8-bit. 
much. I'd play that. I would I would play it too, but I still <laughs> want a, a real Zelda game. Oh yeah, like I like what I, like I would like a real Mega Man game. Exactly, but uh, that's gonna do it for this week uh, here at Two Guys on the Couch. I am Joe, and I am George. We'll see you next time here on the couch. I'm the world's greatest game. I'm the greatest.